Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze back again. Tuesday, 9 a.m. It's too early. <laughs> well, but we're going to be here. We're going to draw. And uh, I got tired dusting today. Hi. <laughs> I'm all, I'm always tired. <laughs> I'm not a morning person. Well, you know why you're always tired? Because you always go to bed at 5. No, I went to bed at 1. Okay, 1 o'clock. But I couldn't fall asleep you to save my life. You need to start drinking coffee. This is my coffee. But today, it's August 4th, and we are ready to draw. I have no idea what to do today, so uh, I figured I'd open it up to request day. You guys tell me what you want. Make it a request, and I'll pick my favorite, and we will go ahead and do it. I got a dirty ear. <laughs> got dirt in my ear. I did a bunch of lawn work at the end of the day around five o'clock. I went out and did a bunch of lawn work, and I didn't clean my ears. Mm. Ended up with a bunch of dirt. But anyway, uh, so here we are, and I want to remind you guys uh, that next Friday, or uh, up until Friday, you have until Friday to register uh, to win uh, the last walk and one. That's available. So go on over to our website, CreatureArtTeacher.com, and sign up for our newsletter, and then you will be automatically uh, signed up to win a walk and one We'll give it away to one lucky person. It's going to be the last one. I know that we've, we've given away uh, four, and this will be the fifth one. And uh, so there's that. And then also I want to remind you, uh, oh, is are you asking if I'm further away from the mic. Can you move the mic? Watch out for that water. Got it. For those of you that are sitting at home listening to your headphones, how's this? <laughs> Does that sound better? <laughs> I know. I was afraid of blowing some. Can you hear me now? <laughs> how's this? <laughs> anyway, so you're. What was I talking about? You were talking about the uh, walk, the Wacom. Uh, oh, the Wacom one. one. After that. Oh, and then. Uh, uh, I just need something. Oh, else. the wolves. Oh. Um, so uh, last week we told on Friday we told you that this weekend was the last weekend to get our wolf course for a dollar. Well, we extended it because there's a lot of people trying to get it in time for the dollar. So, or for the for you latecomers, we're going to extend it. We got it. You, you can still get it today. This is the last day. I don't love that coffee. It was brewed yesterday. Coffee. I heated it up. Nice. Never waste your coffee. Never waste a coffee. Yeah. So my my course on how to draw wolves, coyotes, and foxes. It's an eighteen plus hour course, over eighteen hours of content for one dollar. What's a dollar divided by eighteen? I don't know. It's like thirty cents an hour. I don't know. Forty cents an hour. Hmm. Uh. Anyway. Um. What else have we got? Oh, <laughs> my the, the our our uh, um, scholarships. So the scholarships have been super popular. Uh, so many of you have been um, signing up and you've been inquiring. One thing I do want to make clear to you guys is that yes, I know the school year is coming up. Um, we're doing this every single month, okay? Every month. So if you don't get in this month. Don't worry, you can put in for next month, or the month after that, or the month after that. I, rather than hurry and throw something together really sloppily, I would much rather you take your time, put something together that's really strong. If it takes you more than a month to do it, or if you need to add work, create more work to add to it, then do that. It's much better for you, in the long run, to put your best foot forward than your quickest foot. <laughs> Your quickest foot can trip you up sometimes, okay? So don't do... Hey, that's pretty good. I just made that up. Yeah. Put your best foot forward, not your quickest foot. Your quickest foot can trip you up. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to stick with that. Nice. So they only have one, one chance throughout the entire year? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's only one chance for the entire year. <laughs> so, no. So that's... I mean, we're giving away $5,000 a month, okay? That's 60000 a year. We're giving out... So don't worry if you don't get it this month. You'll have a chance next month or the month after that or the month after that. And we're going until whenever. So um, it's, and it's not just this year. Hopefully if business is good and, and you know funds are available and everything else, then we'll continue to do this indefinitely. Okay, This is something that has been a goal of ours since the first inception of creating CreatureArtTeacher.com. 
and uh, and so now we're at a point where we can do it so this is part of our business part of our business now is to share with you guys and help you guys get educated not just through our own courses but to help you go and get education elsewhere through scholarships and that's why we're doing it so once again if you don't get in uh, this time you'll have next time so put your best foot forward um, take your time put together a good portfolio the other thing is uh, people have been asking can you write it in your native tongue if you don't speak English or if you don't speak English well absolutely yes um, as long as everything is digitally written we can have it translated so that's not don't handwrite it in your native language uh, and then scan it or something because I won't be able to translate it but um, uh, if you can type it in your native language and we can have it translated that's not a problem and then also um, people have been uh, asking about uh, the letter of recommendation the letter of recommendation can be from anybody okay and so some of you have been saying but you know the only important person in my life right now is my is my parents well then have your parents do it um, you can have anybody do it okay so uh, that's that um, am I missing anything on there um, and then of course we've got we, you know, got a whole bunch of other courses available. Tim Hodge. Tim Hodge's new course is out, How to Draw Imaginary Creatures. It's doing very well. And, uh, man, right around the corner, we've got Tony Cipriano. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just finished editing his, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Dustin just, finishing, uh, just finished editing Tony Cipriano's course on ZBrush. Uh, uh, Tony is an award-winning sculptor. And uh, Di ex Disney sculptor and artist, uh, he and I worked together for years and years. At uh, we first met in 1990, uh, so do the math on that. So uh, that's 30 years ago. Wow. And now he's sculpting. He sculpts for Marvel. He sculpts for Disney. He does a lot of great stuff. And uh, he just and he's since uh, in the last few years switched over to digital. And so he just did a course for us on how to sculpt in ZBrush. So that's going to be coming out right around the corner. Plus, we've got our birds and art. You want to switch to my down shooter or my uh, desktop? D down shooter? Yeah, I was over there last week. <laughs> but uh, Dustin and I, we just finished this one. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I did a lecture yesterday on painting uh, bald eagles and their anatomy. And uh, so we did this live. And we've done eight of these so far, these full bodies. Plus, we've done 15 and 16. 15 or 16 different birds on their heads and how you know the anatomy and I mean we, this thing is going to be like 40 hours this is ridiculous I kind of went overboard on this one and I don't think we went live yesterday we just we just recorded yesterday no that's what I mean yeah he said we went live yes we we recorded live oh well live. that's what I meant I mean yeah <laughs> we did we recorded live well I'm, I guess I'm always live when we record right who's the one tired yeah I know right <laughs> so there we go. All right. So, um, but once again, the biggest thing I want to remind you is about the scholarships. Get over there. Go over there. If you're interested in, in uh, a scholarship, anyone in the world, if you're new today, if you haven't heard about this, we are giving away a $5,000 scholarship, $5,000 US dollars uh, every month uh, from here until forever. And uh, and so if you are, and the, 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 um, the scholarship is good for, college tuition it's also good for any online training as well okay so if you want to do uh, training from your home and you want to do it online but there's a tuition fee we can help you okay but what you need to do is go to creatureartteacher.com slash scholarship and fill out uh, the forms there it's going to require you to not only fill out the form but also put together a portfolio uh, links to your Instagram page whatever it might be your your uh, your web page and, uh, and then we will pick one person, one, every month, okay? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if, you, if you submit, but you don't get picked, don't worry. You don't have to submit again the next month. Once we have your portfolio, we have it. It will be part of the, the lineup every single month. Now, if you have stuff that you down the road that you want to add to it, if you want to change it out, you can do that. But don't worry. Once you submit, it's already it's in, okay? So, uh, so anyway, let's jump in. So, draw a dragon. Well, okay, dragon's good. Oh, uh, also, uh, uh, my brother, Travis Blaze, who's also an animator, artist, story artist. Actually, right now, he's uh, a story artist for Netflix. He's just got an awesome, sweet gig there. Nice. 
Everybody's well, there like, is uh, the folks from, uh, um, well, anyway, there's a, a group of people that got together and created an amazing uh, 2D animation app for iPad. And, uh, and the software is called Calipeg. And it's out on the market now. And uh, it's a very cool piece of software. Uh, something you can do animation in right on your uh, iPad. And my brother uh, has kind of teamed up with them and helped them develop it. So he's, he is an absolute expert in it. And we sat, or Nick sat with, uh, with him for, I don't know, four days. And recorded an entire course on that as well. And so that is up for pre-order on Friday. Starting Friday, you can pre-order uh, the Calipeg course with Travis Blaze. All right, that's my younger brother, Travis. He's an amazing uh, animation artist and uh, a story artist, and um, and he can teach you Calipeg. Okay, so there's that. Now let's get started. So Jesse uh, says should draw a cow cowboy. Well, there's one here that's that, Hi, Jesse. that, that I, I hey Jesse. How you doing? I don't know why I'm looking over there. Hey, Jesse, how you doing? A cow cowboy. Well, I, someone here, and I appreciate that one, Jesse, but someone here just said, try something really different today outside your normal, like a robot or a spaceship. I think I would like to do that. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, someone is asking, uh, Aaron, have you ever drawn a manta ray? And Dustin, have you photographed one? I I personally I've drawn taken manta rays, yeah. Huh? I've drawn manta rays, yeah. Yeah, I haven't taken photos of one because I don't have the the equipment to to take photos underwater just yet. Now I like the suggestion of getting out of my comfort zone. I'm gonna do. I you know I haven't drawn a spaceship or a or a robot in probably. Oh my god. Probably, I think the last uh, spaceship. Probably twenty years. I think the last spaceship uh, you did was. Was the one you col you colored in when I when I drew that spaceship on the Photoshop and you went in and colored it? Yeah, that's the last one I remember. I think you're right. So that's what I'm gonna do. What if I do a robot spaceship? A robot spaceship. <laughs> I mean, it's not out of the norm. There. You know, with my one of my what favorite one of my favorite uh, sci-fi artists uh, is um, is it John Berkey? Berkey, look up Berkey. Uh, let me pull him up here. Uh, but when you said uh, al uh, when you said ro robotic spaceships, it made me think of an anime called Outlaw Star. John Berkey. Yeah, John Berkey. Look up uh, for those of you out there. This is this guy was one of my favorites growing up. I think he just. He, pa uh, he passed away in 2008. Uh, he did these paintings in acrylic. Actually, he did the painting, you know, the uh, the 1976 King Kong that's standing on the Twin Towers and he's got the jet in his hand? I think so. That's an old, uh, there's a King Kong movie that came out when I was a kid. John Berkey painted that. Nice. He also did an early version of the Star Wars posters. Oh. But John Berkey, um, look him up right here. Uh, amazing sci-fi spaceship paintings and that sort of thing and I was always a huge fan I had his his uh, I had his paintings on my book covers and stuff like that when I was a kid and I uh, always wanted to paint like him I never did I went you know more natural than animals but what I love about his stuff is how organic the shapes are these shapes are super super organic and so I thought why don't we kind of use his uh, stuff as inspiration. I'm not going to draw it exact. And we'll do a vertical for you uh, Instagrammers out there. But I want to prove to you, I might, I might fail, <laughs> but, I'm, but it's not going to, it's not going to keep me from trying. I want to prove to you that just because you specialize in a certain genre, like me with animals, you can do other stuff. Should I do a robot? What would you rather see, a robot or a spaceship? Uh, a few folks are saying, uh, do, uh, do a Gundam. 
Oh, I want to make up some. I don't want to use. I don't want to do someone else's. I want to come up with a design of our own. Because I want to show you kind of one of the things I like to do is just find organic shapes and develop those into something. Uh, well, like for instance, I I was developing a movie a while back, a while back, uh, a sci-fi film uh, that we were going to do, um, and uh, called the Lightning Catchers, and it was a story of uh, these two two basically two sects of people. There was one sect lived on the ground. They were called the Grounders. Uh, and then the, the earth was completely covered in clouds and storms and everything. And so they lived down below the storms and had this hard life. And then there's the, uh, the cloud people who lived above the clouds in these floating cities and ships. And so I did a bunch of designs for that and had a lot of fun doing it. He says, I'd love to see combining real animal with mechanic type, with mechanics type robot, like a, like a cyborg. Uh, that's cool, but I'm not going to do that. Nick says, Robot! <laughs> Rusty robot covered in moss with a little bit of nature. All right, let's do it. Let's do a robot. The one thing I like to do is I start with... Uh, well, let's do this. Um, I'm going to try... I'm going to turn on my... Uh, my... This is something you can cheat with in uh, uh, in Photoshop. I'm putting my symmetry tool on. I just turned it on, and so now I can. Robot walking board with a paintbrush for a weapon. <laughs> Interesting one. What do you think of uh, art made in made in a three D program? Basically, like, uh, CG art. It's, it's. I think it's. I mean, I think it's as much art as anything else. It takes an artistic eye to create. Well, somebody's recommending a uh, steampunk. Oh, I'm gonna do this. So we're done with the requests? <laughs> yeah, we're done with requests. So she says, I can't wait to see how it comes out. I will see it when I wake up for work later. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye. Later. So with the symmetry tool, you can see you can create some very cool um, creatures. And I'm... I'm basically doing what I always do when I'm designing. I'm trying to keep uh, aesthetics in mind. Actually, I'm going to take this part out. I like that. So I'm not going to, this is just for inspiration. I'm going to take this and use this for, uh, as reference in just a minute here. YouTube comment. He's an amazing painter. I remember the King Kong poster from back then. Absolutely. Yeah. Berkey was awesome. So I'm just going, you can see how loose I'm going, and I'm imagining, I'm trying to give it some sort of anthropomorphic look, although it's going to be more alien than anything else, but I'm going to give it two eyes and a head, and I'm thinking about, you know, like this, this is part of its neck, so that's going to be almost like vertebrae. Does anyone know if Clip Studio Paint has a symmetry brush as well? I don't know. I haven't found it on my own. That I don't know. Well, what's the brush you're currently using? Just my usual pastel C, but I'm but I've got it set to my 
symmetry setting. Because the way the the sides of the heads are, the how long the neck is, I'm getting ET vibes from this. <laughs> ET vibes? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. See? Got a little robot going on. Nice. So, once again, that's just finding organic shapes and using that symmetry brush. Let's turn that off. Symmetry off. Symmetry off. Symmetry off. Is the um, symmetry tool available for the 2017 Photoshop? I believe it is. I'm not sure. I cannot remember. Symmetry off. Who's your favorite robot or droid in sci-fi? Like design-wise, but also a personal favorite? Oh, um, shoot, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, Well, there's always C-3PO and R2-D2, right? Oh, yeah. I kind of like the the, uh, the AI droid as well. AI droid. With Will, uh, Will Smith? Oh, iRobot? iRobot, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Voiced by Alan Tudyk? Yeah, I actually know the guy that uh, modeled that robot for the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, and they made he made it look like him. <laughs> huh. Yeah. He made it look. I mean, he made it look like the sculptor. The sculptor, the guy that modeled it. Yeah, he made it look like himself. Uh. <laughs> Have you recovered from the storm devastation he had the other day? <laughs> yeah, we've recovered. <laughs> it was terrible. Uh, you lost Twitch, com a cup. <laughs> Twitch comment. There was a spaceship or something similar in, pers in the in perspective course. Yes, there was actually. Yes. YouTube comment. Yes, you can do symmetry in CS Paint. They are called rulers. Oh, and uh, Nick says symmetry brush is not in Photoshop 2017. So there you go. Sorry about that if I led you astray. So it says, I love the T-1000 from Terminator. Uh, I think my, my personal favorite is the T-800 Terminator. Uh, when it comes to like my favorite robot or droid selection. I'll be back. That's kind of fun. It's, you know, it's, uh, at the risk of not having time to develop anything. <laughs> But let's use that as inspiration. Actually, speaking of Terminator, have you seen the last Terminator movie? Back I did. Day? Yeah, you haven't. I haven't. Man, I'm sweating. It's hot. Oh, it's hot in here. It's hot. It's yeah, hot. Like, every other Terminator movie, I always look forward to. But Dark Fate was the first one when I was just like, eh. So. Like the first two movies were were my all time favorites, but they should have stopped there. <laughs> That's what you were expecting, weren't you? Yeah. 
Did you watch the landing of the SpaceX Dragon spaceship? I did not. I missed it. Uh, I watched the uh, the test flight of the uh, of the SpaceX program. I saw the uh, the ex the external boosters coming off and returning returning to Earth. I saw that live. Holy crap! Are, are those things insane? Oh yeah, when it when it comes down. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, they so they self land within a matter of seconds onto the onto the platform and it's like right on the dot. Yeah. It's insane. It's super cool. I just imagine that kind of technology and other what was gonna be like another five, ten years from now. <laughs> So I'm using the drawing that I did up top there as inspiration for this, which I'm just sketching right now. Well, somebody points out that um, the robot, the main robot in iRobot, his name is uh, Sonny. Oh, that's right. The name of the robot. Sonny! Can the portfolio be in a Google Drive? In a Google Drive? Yes. I guess so. Nick, can it be in a Google Drive? Nick, 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 can it uh, can a portfolio be in a Google Drive? And he replied with yes. So it can. Pay attention. I'm Pay just... attention. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger is the best part. Love of love all the movies. Whoops. Yeah, Arnold, I'm, Arnold is what makes all of his movies the best part. <laughs> It's showtime. <laughs> In fact, my one of my biggest uh, um, guilty pleasure movies would have to be Batman and Robins, just because of Arnold's puns. Oh yeah. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. <laughs> 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 All right, everyone, chill. Let's make it come out kind of human. Put the cookie down! <laughs> now! <laughs> Hello. 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 Can you recommend an exercise for improving composition for design? Thank you. I am working as a prop designer. One of the things I like to do is just for composition is take try to draw organic shapes, but put them in a pleasing in a pleasing uh, arrangement. Sort of like what we're trying to do here. What I'm trying to do. And see here. Sorry. 
put them in a pleasing arrangement and just do that over and over again and you start to find what works compositionally and what doesn't. Oh yeah, that's another good cyborg. Somebody, somebody says uh, favorite, uh, that their favorite machine is uh, Botoko Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell. Oh yeah. The, the main character. Uh huh. Are the details in this robot inspired by real machinery you saw? No, I'm just making it up. I mean, I'm just trying to draw, you know, gears and tracks and mechanical looking things. Somebody <laughs> keeps commenting our Arnie uh, Arnie lines. You want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. Which comment? I would say any of my favorite robots is Teddy from the oh Teddy from the movie AI. Yeah, mm. I like Teddy too. Also, because your robots on tracks, that's reminding me of the. Um Robot from Lost in Space, the 2000 movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your robot's reminding me of that. <laughs> I can't draw, I, I swear, I can't do an image without it reminding somebody of, a, of something else. Well, that's what it happens with any, any drawing. Like, any drawing reminds people of something, whether if it's a memory or a movie or something. So I'm just, what I'm doing here is just very quickly sketching, sketching. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Do you have any favorite movies uh, where you like the world, the world of building? Um, Avatar. Avatar. Top, top favorite world building film yeah I have to agree with Avatar but also uh, Blade Runner I really like yeah. for that too And then there's all kinds of mechanical stuff down here. This drawing reminds me of E.T. in the movie Men in Black. <laughs> It also reminds me of using voice recognition technology in a lift out of in Mars. Space. <laughs> <laughs> One day, can you draw a Megazord? Megazord? Uh, Megazord, why is that so familiar? I don't know. Oh. 
giant Power Rangers robots? Have you ever made a flipbook animation? Yes, I have. Every time I would make a, a scene at Disney, because we animated everything on paper, it was like a flipbook. Yep. Here's the Megazord. Oh, cool. Oh, my perspective is way off. Man, holy smokes. Can't have perspective off. Yeah, Ready Player One was quite cool, too. Yeah, it was. I agree with that. Like, mixing in all the different video game worlds into one giant world. Yeah. Is is absolutely insane. Why am I so sweaty? So Today. sweaty. Why am I so sweaty? So sweaty. Oh my god, you're like so sweaty. Wow. <laughs> 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 So there's that. You know the other thing we used to do? I'm going to clean, clean this up in just a minute. We'll, we'll have some fun with it. But one of the things, one of the ways we used to make um, spaceships, we used to do this thing where we would just go in and make these scribbles like so. Just scribble. And then out of that, we would create these spaceships. And it was a lot of fun, because you could take that scribble and use that as inspiration. And you could come up with these really fun, like this would be kind of like a uh, cargo ship, you know, the big, almost like the big guppy airplane that we have nowadays. You could create a lot of fun little ships. <laughs> Shoot, there. That's a fun way to, to uh, do that. So if you're ever looking to create spaceships, sit down and just draw organic little scribbles and then use that as inspiration to come in and and uh, refine and turn into a spaceship, like so. It's a lot of fun to do. Yeah, I remember in high school, uh, I did something very, very similar to where I would, but I would already have like the basic idea in my head. Mm -hmm. But that would pretty much be it, and I would just start making lines, like yeah. straight lines, curved lines. And I would just, over time, eventually start connect, connecting the lines. And sometimes, like, I overshoot the line, and it's all in pen, and so I end up adding, like, a turn to that line and start adding it to the shape. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of times, though, I would redo the, the same design that, that I... I was trying to make, uh -huh. but just tried to make an improvement on it, whether if it's like larger wings or larger uh, larger cockpit size or different weapons. And it's just all different sorts of versions of the same ships. That's cool. And a lot of them were inspired by the, uh, the Viper uh, fighter uh, ship in uh, Battlestar Galactica. Um, yeah, yeah, I did a lot of those as well <laughs> when I was a kid. Like, I'm sure at least half of my drawings in high school were based off of uh, Viper designs. <laughs> Have you drawn a character from Princess Mononoke before? No, I haven't. Oh, ever what? Have I ever drawn a character from Princess Mononoke? Well, YouTube well, comment. I would say Altered Carbon is doing a great job too with interesting, believable world that could be a real thing in the future. That's true. 
Yeah, using thinking of your body as just kind of a a sleeve, something to that you can take your consciousness out of and transfer into another body, I think is an amazingly cool concept and that world is really interesting. That concept reminds me a lot of um, the newer Battle, Battlestar Galactica the, um, and the game called EVE Online because it has the same mentality of like if you die your your thoughts and memories get transferred to a new body. Yeah. What book, movie, animation, or artist greatly inspires you? Oh, there's there's too many to, to mention here. Um, you know, classic artists, John Singer Sargent, Joaquin Soroya, um, so many, um, Monet, we were just talking about last night. Actually, it's funny that, that comes up. Um, but there's a lot. And then there's contemporary artists that today that really inspire me. One of my favorite is Jeremy Lipkin. If you look him up, what an amazing painter he is. <laughs> if Tom Hanks had a ro robot friend called Wilson, this is what Wilson would look like. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube question. I'm doing your animation course now. Just wondering if you could talk about when it's best to redraw the whole body and when to just redraw the part that is moving, such as the head. Well, that's that's basically it. You just answered your own question. You only you, you only need to draw the part that's moving when you're first laying it down. You know, other parts can be just laid down as a held cell or or, or just done as a partial. And um, and it's when you tie it down, once the you know the rough animation is figured out, that's when you can go in and. Um, draw everything but when you're just laying out your your uh, your rough animation just draw the parts you need to which are you know the parts that are moving when you worked on the Lion King did you guys uh, blur the Lion Cubs if so um, did we what when you guys worked on Lion King did you guys uh, play with Lion Cubs oh. and if so uh, where'd you guys do it at a zoo or at a studio? Yes, we did play with the lion cubs, and they brought the cubs to us. So at the animation studio? Yeah. What are your preferred brush settings when you're sketching like this? Um, it's just whatever the every brush is unique, so. Um, this brush, you know, has a unique setup in the way that it creates this texture, as you can see. See the texture? Um, it's just got this nice little chalky texture to it that I really like when I sketch. Feels like pastel, which is why I call it my pastel C brush. Did the uh, lion cubs have names? I don't remember. I'm sure they did. But that was 25 years ago. I don't remember the cubs' names. Longer than that even, I think. So here I'm just tying it down. And I like to use, you know, some anatomy that's familiar and then just and then mix that with mechanical bits YouTube question, which color is the best for background while you draw and doesn't burn your eyes? 
I'm just, I, use, I always put down a gray background like this. A neutral gray background. For Birds of Prey course, can you add one short gouache painting to the course so we can see the knowledge applied to a real artwork? That would be so helpful. Wait a minute. Real artwork? <laughs> you might want to rephrase your question, pal. Listen here, you old buster. Digital work is real. I know, I'm just giving you a hard time. You're talking about traditional. And, um... Um... I, we can, yes, we can talk about that. For me, it's not really about, um, although I am talking, I do want to talk about the painting part of it, so. I mean, the bo the body portions of each of the birds is basically, uh, basically, a base, basically, <laughs> um, a whole art piece of its own. Each. It is. So. So I think we'll get you covered on real artwork, okay? <laughs> uh, do you use 3D elements in your concept artworks uh, to use as a base for forms and uh, shapes? No. <laughs> I just do it um, by feel, you know, like this. Hey, I Walt, do I do photo bashing every once in a while. Did Walt Disney get to play with the Cubs? <laughs> oh, never gets old. I'm going to sketch this out, and then we're going to render it. What do you think is better for highlights, color dodge, or what do you think is better for highlights, color dodge or tone play? I don't know what tone play is. Or value play. I don't know what value play is. I don't. I haven't used that. But I like color dodge. You like color dodge, you say? I like color dodge. You like the col color dodge. Confirm he likes color dodge. Twitch question. Do you think traditional art will always keep having a strong influence in the art animation game industry? Absolutely. Always. Forever. Yep. I purchased your cloud and water tutorials and they were awesome. So fun. Uh, it was so much fun doing them. Uh, would you be doing a fire course as in part of the elements of nature? Yes. Yes, we will. It might not be me, but we will be doing it. Fire. 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 I can't do it. Dude, you should watch Tiger King. That sh is rough. <laughs> I have watched Tiger King. Now I had to take a shower after I did. I bet not even a shower was enough. Can this be a tiny robot as small as a mouse or Maya bird? Sure. It's on your sure. <laughs> sup up? What's up, Aaron and Dustin? It's Eve from DD Days. How's it going? I've been animating a project for almost a year. How do you deal with arm pain? Uh, I don't have it. I don't get it. Um, so I've never, I've never had that issue. And I, I just realized I created an arm that can't bend. <laughs> <laughs> Got to redraw this. Let's see here. 
let's uh, let's go back to being rough. So I got to create a joint that can bend. Have you ever drawn ferrets? Um, no, I don't think I have drawn any ferrets. So we have has a question and the profile picture of this of this person asking this question fits so well. <laughs> if you're drawing robots now, and he ha and it has this straight face of like, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's a profile picture. <laughs> Was that is that a uh, is that a slam or? Uh, just think, I think just think of curiosity of like you're drawing robots now. So here, let's make a joint. Yeah, so he, it was requesting, somebody requested uh, ro uh, something different, something out of the comfort zone, so yep. robot. So I stepped out of my comfort zone and I'm drawing a robot. and a wrist wrap from the Walmart pharmacy section uh, for mine, but it helped a lot. Take care of those joints. Yeah, I am. Um, I tend to, I draw a little bit from the wrist when I get detailed, like I'm drawing a little bit from the wrist now. But I tend to draw from the shoulder more often than not. And I don't really get any arm pain. I never have. I've been doing this for a long time. What is photo bashing? Photo bashing is taking um, textures, photographic textures and elements, and putting them into your composition digitally. Like in this case, I would probably use some mechanical elements so I don't have to draw all the details and just lay them in over, over some of these elements here. What's your take on how to make up mechanical parts on a robot that look like it could function in reality? Like studying the existing stuff first and uh, the way they work? Yes, exactly. I would look at, you know what? Robots tend to, you know, are basically built like exoskeletons, right? They've got their, you can see all the parts and everything. And I would look at insects. Look at insects and the way they're put together. And, and uh, a lot of artists, designers, will look at nature for inspiration. You know, nature is the best engineer. So, when you can study those things, those, those aspects, you'll find um, some really cool stuff. Now this is something just off the top of my head. So, I mean, I'm like I haven't had any time at all to even think about it for f at all, and so this is not going to be the most thought out image. But 
I'm having some fun with it. I am I am thinking about some stuff, like having to bend the arm. And How do you bend the arm? Well, you need to use pistons to bend the arm, hydraulics or whatever it might be. And so that's what I'm thinking about here in the arm here. And then other stuff is just general mechanical gobbledygook. Yeah, there's um, there's actually a, a real-time strategy game about that. I just uh, tried out. There's a demo for it out currently, and I think the full game comes out in September. And it's called uh, Iron Harvest, uh -huh. uh, 1920s plus, and it's basically what happened if uh, if World War One uh, didn't happen the way it the way it did now, but instead it was fought with uh, mechanical robots. Oh, I did. I saw that. I saw. Yeah. yeah, I saw that in Facebook. Yeah. So yeah, all all this. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. Yeah, it's all like steampunk themed, uh, giant uh, man man operated ro uh, machines and robots and I I cannot wait for that game to come out <laughs> I fell in love with the game oh I'm sure because uh, uh, growing up like my first uh, PC games were real time strategy games like uh, Command and Conquer Tiger and Sun and Starcraft and when I got my first computer Alienware uh I one of my first games I got on there was Company of Heroes, and I loved the way the RTS mechanics were in that game. And this current this current game, Iron Harvest, has all the same fighting mechanics as Company of Heroes. That's super cool. So I I super cannot wait. What was the first thing you bought quote for the company once you were registered? I don't remember. Do you remember, Nick? What was it? What's your question? What was the first thing we bought, quote, for the company once we were registered? I'm assuming oh. he means, or this person means, a creature art teacher. What did we buy? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to draw my ellipses. My daughter, Dahlia, who is almost four, wants to ask you, is your robot going to be gray? Are all robots gray? Um, no, he's not going to be gray. And not all robots have to be gray, no. They don't have to be. They could be red, blue, pink, green. Yeah. Any color that you want, they can, they can be that color. Erica's here. Hey, Erica. Says, I was late to the stream and was wondering where the robot came from. Love the design so far. It was a challenge. Somebody wanted me to step out of my comfort zone and create a robot or a spaceship, so we chose robot. So I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. Have you seen the robots by the by a company called Boston Dynamics? Oh yeah, they're spooky, man. Uh, which robots are those? It's like the the walking dogs. Oh yeah. They go. They try to push them over and. <laughs> have you seen the spoofs that they've done with that? I I have of um. The oh, robot just like finally the over gets over they're, because they're constantly pushing them over and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Gary, stop it! <laughs> oh yeah, the in yeah they have the the dog looking one and the uh, and the bike. I think the dog looking one you can actually buy now. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, the bi the bipedal robot um, can do like. Can do backflips and can also leap up on, 
on ledges. <laughs> Nick said probably lunch was the first thing that we bought. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Sometime at the Disney studio. Look, they brought a mouse so we can draw Mickey better. No, the, this one just came from the bathroom drain. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just feel like this robot works janitor duty on a dystopian space station. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, the... the uh, Treads definitely gives it more more traction in case of the floors wet. See, I'm thinking I'm thinking of it as as a uh, uh, out, out for outdoors. That's why it has the treads oh, like to get over to get over rough terrain, and, <laughs> and the treads can change their shape. That's why all the different wheels are in there ah, to keep them going. So it can go, so he can change uh, elevation. Yeah. Jonathan Kuo. If you guys don't know who Jonathan Kuo is, check out Jonathan Kuo. Last name K-U-O. You want to talk about a guy that can draw animals and translate that into robots and mechanical things? Oh my gosh, this guy is amazing. We've never met in person. I've been wanting to meet him for years. We know all the same people. But check him out, Jonathan Kuo. He's a total inspiration for me. Talking about you, someone asked earlier, you know, who inspires me. Jonathan Kuo is a guy that inspires me. His work is so incredible. And he just he just sits down and I think I'll just do some sketching tonight. And he just puts out these amazing pieces of art designs. Robot. Robot. <laughs> Robot. Robot. I hate your face. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so funny. You're not funny. You, you're so funny. Maybe you can get the spot mini robot by by uh, Boston Dynamics to <laughs> to clean your pool after the storm. <laughs> Did you see my post mm. about the pool, about the, all the damage we had? We well, mentioned about it. Oh, I uh, showed it to you. You were yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> the spinning leaf in the uh, or the floating leaf in the pool. Yeah. It was sunny almost the whole day. We had some rain that blew through, but it would, would be very brief, and it was just really a beautiful day all day yes, uh, during the, on Sunday, which is when the storm was supposed to be hitting. Oh, uh, but as far oh, Nick was saying, as far as uh, our purchase on our uh, on our business, it was probably camera equipment that we purchased. I know we've purchased several computers too. This is fun to do something different. If somebody got the <laughs> the robot reference I made. Grandma's boy, yes. That's what it's from. Oh, that's I hate it your face. <laughs> that's right, nerd. nerd. I forgot about that. <laughs> he sleeps in a car, a little kid's car. Remember no, that's car? the um, that's the other uh, that's a, the guy's friend. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's a freaking sweet car. <laughs> yeah, but it's the one that does the robot though. voice is like the quote unquote villain of the. Oh, that's the right. One that's, the one that. Looks like he came out of the Matrix. That's right, I forgot about that. <laughs> He's always making robot sounds. It's just awkward.
How many years uh, has it taken for you to learn to, to draw? Seven. Seven? No, it's... I'm still learning how to, to draw. You know, it's, it's taken an entire lifetime. When did you start? Started drawing when I was about two years old. So that would be 1970, 50 years ago. I was born in 1968. You were born in the 60s? Yes, I was born in the 60s. You were born in the 60s? Have you ever worked on animated TV shows? Um, no, not really. I did, uh, early on, there was a cartoon, and I just did a tiny little bit of animation. Not for the show, but it was like a, a little interstitial. And it was um, Marsupilami. His character it was, uh, I think, originally a French character, um, but uh, for Disney. And I did a little bit of animation for that. How can I make the pastel C brush act like uh, as those acting in Photoshop, but in Procreate? Um, I'd have to. Get, I, I don't know. I have to get in there and look at it. I can't answer that off the cuff. I think grandma's mom, when, when the, when the guy uh, flips everyone off and fires them like machine guns, audio turn nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, he made me laugh every time I watch. thinking of gecko fingers. Gecko fingers can stick to anything, so I figure if you had like gecko fingers, you could grip anything. Nice. 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 When you worked at Disney, did you help work on Brother Bear? <laughs> I co-directed Brother Bear. Yes. I actually, my partner, my uh, direct, uh, produce, producing partner, Chuck Williams, actually came up with the original concept. Uh, we developed it together. But he went away one night. We were coming up with new concepts, and he came up with a concept called Snow, uh, Shadow Bear, which he read to me when uh, he gave me a little treatment of when we he got back into work, and then uh, I really liked it. Um, I had developed some other ideas, but I liked his better, and so we started developing Shadow Bear, and that eventually turned into Brother Bear. Yeah, so there's our little robot drawn out. That was kind of fun. Let's uh, want to give it some color. Yeah, some color. Yeah, the actor Grandma's boy is also an avatar. That that is correct. Oh, that's right. I forgot about him. Yeah. If he was a Spellman, I think his name was in the yeah. movie. Yeah. So now, or right now, what I want to do is um. Light in color. That's why I just keep imagining him as like nice and sleek. Got this new brush, soft edge. So say that you coda directed, Brother Bear. Yes, I coda directed. <laughs> uh, do you have a date for the uh, ZBrush course? Uh, soon. Within within a couple of weeks. So every time I hear soon, I just think of um, the scene of Romance of the Stone. What? Uh, Danny DeVito. <laughs> How soon? His buddy's like, very soon. <laughs> I love those movies. Romance of the Stone? Yeah, Danny DeVito's hilarious. Oh, yeah.
And he voiced uh, Phil in Hercules. Are you using a display tablet? Uh, yes, I am. Dustin? Yeah. The 32 inch Wacom Cintiq Pro. I guess it shifted over a slight bit. There we, right go. Now. there we go. So it's a big one. It's a, it's a big shaka. It's a big boy. 32 inch Cintiq Pro on Photoshop. What is the one advice that would take my art to the next level? Keep don't keep going. Work at it every day. That's the only way to get to the next level. And be open minded. Try different things. That's a big one. Don't do the same thing over and over. Sort of like what I'm doing today. How often do you see me draw robots? I don't even know the last time I drew a robot. Not the best. It's not the best robot in the world, but hey, it's probably not the worst. I kind of like this guy. Do you like any modern anime like Demon Slayer or My Hero Academia? I don't know them. Uh, you may not, but I do. <laughs> yes, I love uh, My Hero Academia. I love One Punch Man. And also enjoy Seven Deadly Sins. And I don't know if Fairy Tale is considered a modern anime, but I've always been an old, old school kind of guy. Not really super old school, but like 90s, like Cowboy Bebop, Trigun, Outlaw Star, like those kinds of anime. But the modern stuff is still good. Yeah, I don't know anime very well, so... I just don't know. I'm a bad one to ask. I just don't know. Did you animate the transformation scene in Beauty and the Beast? How was your experience working with Glenn Keane? I've worked... Uh, working with Glenn Keane is amazing. It's awesome. He's a wonderful man. He's an amazing human being. Uh, he's very giving and in his time and his knowledge. Um, Glenn actually animated the transformation scene in Beauty and the Beast. I animated uh, the song There's Something There That Wasn't There Before with Beast. I did the scene in front of the fireplace where she's trying to bandage him and he yells, That hurts! And they get into a big fight. Uh, I animated a lot of the stuff when he's taking her to her room in the beginning. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. Hey, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, E? Hey, I was wondering, but i uh, not sure if you answered because I had to leave for, for a minute, but would you recommend uh, Calipeg or Procreate uh, if I want to do illustrations? Um, I would recommend Procreate because it's, I think, specifically for that. Calipeg can do illustrations, uh, although it's not as robust as Calipeg, I mean as uh, Procreate. But the cool thing, obviously, with with uh, Calipeg is that you can animate with it, and that's what it's specifically for. Anime question, how about Dragon Ball? I... Only ver I very rarely ever watch Dragon Ball or any of the Dragon Ball Z stuff. Only like four or five episodes. And if I tried catching up now, I would never be able to. <laughs> so, never really bothered with it. Hey, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, E? How's it going, E? Uh, I think you should draw elves, dwarves, hobbit. And I bought your uh, two lessons. They are These are very good. Thank you. I think appreciate uh, fantasy, uh, fantasy characters would be fun, like the elves, like basically Lord of the Rings stuff. Yeah. One ring to rule the ball. Oh, I just heard Vedanta pull up. 
Do you have any live streams scheduled for pastels? No. You know what? Pastel is something I've never really done. Did you build that wood mount behind the display board? Yes, I did. I built a lot of the stuff in my office, actually. Question for Dustin. Have you watched Serial Experiment Lane? Uh, that's a 1998 anime. Um, no, I have not, but... I've seen clippets of it here and there on YouTube in the past, but I just never c could figure out what it, what it was until just now. Because <laughs> I just uh, uh, Google searched the, the name when you mentioned it. But, uh, no, not yet, though. I will definitely check it out at some point. Check it out now. Funk so brother. Check it out now. I couldn't go to art school, but currently I'm taking online courses to help me get better. Is it the same as an art school or not? Where, well, where I I'm think from, there's not a lot of good art lessons. Any advice? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's, it's you'll get out of it whatever you put into it. And so, yes, I think it can be just as good as art school, especially considering how much you'd pay for art school. When they're completely overpriced here in the states, I don't know what it's like elsewhere. Um, so I think yes, you know, learning online is definitely a uh, an alternative. Which is why you know, with our scholarships, um, we are we're offering to pay for online costs as well. Um, obviously, the differences are going to be that you're not going to be learning with peers. You're not going to you know you're not going to have another person there with you or, or other people to inter interact with necessarily um, like you would in a in a um, a school situation actually I'm going to give him different color eyes and yellow eyes he had yellow eyes I swear he had yellow eyes yellow eyes those eyes they disappear <laughs> I want to try drawing with a pen. Should I? That's be, awesome. Should I be getting a special paper or just sketch paper? Uh, what kind of pen? If you're talking about a ballpoint pen or a, a marker, you know that that will determine a little bit more what kind of paper you should use. But definitely use a if you're going to use a pen, something that can take wet media. Your face is an ergo proxy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I use uh, reference videos for animation. Is there any tips for choosing the correct key pose? It's well, the correct key pose is the one that's going to be. You can tell that it, you know it, it changes after a certain. Um, I don't know, how do I explain it? It's going to be the pose that determines the the movement before and after it. And so you can, with training, you can you can tell which one that is. It's hard to explain right now. I'm, plus, I'm drawing, so I have a hard time talking. <laughs> you want me to shut up? No, it's okay. It's your job, man. Keep it's talking. To me. Are you still working on Snow Bear? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> sure. We'll be working on Snow Bear for the rest of my life. <laughs> I hope we get it done soon. Just once we hit the, we finally hit the eight minute mark. You know what? Let's let's have a few more minutes in into this thing. Yeah. Twenty years later, it looks like we made a full movie. Yeah.
what's your process for designing something new, but under art direction? I don't know what that means. It's like, what's your, what's your process of designing, um, like, what's your, th like, how do you process the art, art directing someone to create a new design for a movie, like somebody creating the art, the concept art, and then you go and oh, it's, direct it's, them it's just them. a collaborative, you gotta be willing to keep an open mind and know that other people are bringing, you know, you're not, let other people flex their creative talents as well. Yes, that's the, that's the key. You know, when we did the transformation sequence, I, I use this as, a, as an example a lot in my talks. When we did the transformation sequence for Brother Bear, we really didn't know what we wanted. We knew kind of the, uh, the spectacle, but we didn't know how to execute it. And so we put it out to one of our visual development artists, and he figured it out in, a, in about six weeks and came and pitched it to us, and we loved it. And so we used it for the film. It's that kind of thing. Now how um, Twitch question. I always feel like my work is not good enough. When was the turning point for you? When did you realize, hey, I can do this forever and I'm pretty good because I'm still waiting for that moment. Um, well, there's an element of me that I've never hit that. But there's also an element where I go, okay, yeah, obviously because I'm, I've been, I'm teaching and, and, and kind of spreading the knowledge that I've learned. And that sort of thing probably happened I don't know 15 years ago or so uh, but yeah it's a uh, it's it's definitely um, frustrating but you just got to trust the process and the process is continuing to go at it as often as you can continue that that drawing making mistakes painting making mistakes making success and making mistakes again and making success and you just continue that process for a lifetime and I think eventually you'll go okay I think I'm, I'm, I'm at least pro proficient at this but you know as soon as I don't think you'll ever hit a point where you go okay now I'm good because I don't think any artist feels that status you know feels that um you're always, I think a true artist is always trying to improve upon something, looking for new challenges. And uh, so that will be something that you'll always be searching for. Did that make sense? Because I was really rambling there as I tried to draw these and make decisions at the same time. Uh, I think so. Okay, you weren't listening. No. But um, actually, my uh, my personal follow up uh, with the previous question about the uh, um, art art direction with the concept art. What what would you say to somebody who is acting as the the concept artist who is taking the critiques from the from the director? Um, well, depend. First of all, the director there's a certain way you give a critique. You talk about what you like, you talk about what's not working, you compare it, I think, to what you're trying to achieve for the film, and, and then you see if it's, if it's doing what it's supposed to do. That's important. And, um, and then you go from there. You can't just simply say, this stinks. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then you, you talk about, you let the, the artist talk about how they came to the decisions that they made what's inspiring them because they have to have a point of view they've got to have a point of view in what they're doing do you ever come to San Diego? San Diego uh, yes. Not very often, but yes. Steven on YouTube says, My kids and I have been watching Bobby Chu's Nico and the Sword of Light. They are enjoying it, and I find it rather delightful as well as thoughtful. Love that kind of content. 
Yeah, that's it's pretty awesome. We're pretty, I'm pretty uh, amazed by Bobby. He's a he's a cool dude as well. Andy, how are you? Loving this departure or stretch. Question. How would you go about showing emotion? Could you do a couple of sketches where this robot is physically expressing different emotions? Um, uh, if I have time, I will try to do some at the end. But right now, I'm still just trying to render him out. And I don't know that he would show emotion. Um, you could do it through the color of the eyes, maybe. There might be some movement you can do with some of the mechanical bits inside. Um, but I'll definitely try after afterwards. Right now I'm still just trying to get this render done. And do it in a timely manner, right Nick? <laughs> is there a way to make your own watercolor paper? If there is, I don't know it. I just don't know. Sonny! What is the longest artwork you ever did? Um, well, if you're, uh, if you're talking about, uh, well, if you, can, if you consider movies artwork, um, I was on Brother Bear for six years, but if you're just talking about paintings, probably about a month. Today is the last day to get my How to Draw Wolves for a dollar. Thanks for reminding me. Yes, I want to uh, I want to remind you guys, if you want to get 18 plus hours of content for one dollar, one dollar, it's, it's uh, How to Draw Wolves, Coyotes, and Foxes. All of that you can get for one dollar. Today's the last day. It's going to go back up to its normal price. So hurry on over to creatureartteacher.com. Creatureartteacher. Creatureartteacher. Would you animate a Michelangelo character? The turtle or the person? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> What's the resolution uh, size you're working on? Uh, uh, 18 by 24 inches at 300 dpi. Do you think that inside the tread should be white or should I make that another color? Maybe orange, like the other orange here? Let's see what that looks like. Try making the no. No, try no. keeping them a darker gray like they're in shadow, but the oh, no, I'm gonna put shadow. I will put shadow and make that feels better. What do you think of that? You like that? Make, try making the the base white, but the wheels orange. 
Oh, the wheel's orange. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of a cool idea. Let me see. I shouldn't say kind of. I mean, come on. I know it's a cool idea. But you're, mm -hmm. cool. You're, you're, you're a cool guy. Well, thank you. But, uh, I, I try my, I try my hum humble bed. Maybe if we just do the main wheels. Oh, like the three, the three main wheels? Is it the three? Is it three as the main wheels, or is it, or is there more than three? Well, there's obviously more than three, but you know what I mean. Let's do it like that. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, the, the rest of them, you want, want to make them white? I'm going to fix this. Uh, no, I keep I'll keep them gray. There's something about that I like. You like that there? And the gray the gray wheels though just feels out of place like they're not colored colored in in any way. So you want them white? Yeah. Because if the if the other if the main wheels are orange, it's only fair that the main, that the secondary wheels are white, so it matches the uh, the rest the of the robot. The aesthetics of the robot, yeah. I can dig it. You can dig it. I can dig it, baby. Can you dig it? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. See what I was going for? Yeah. There you go. Let's flop it. And see what. See how it looks. Yeah, I kind of like that. I dig it. You dig it. I dig it. There you, you dig go. It? Yeah, I dig it. All right. Uh, there we go. All right. So I am going to do that. I'm going to get rid of that scribbly underdrawing. Mm. <laughs> My coffee's cold, man. <laughs> I like cold coffee sometimes, but that's day old cold, reheated, uh, cold again coffee. <laughs> Looks like cheese. Mmm. Cheese. cheese. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Uh. All right. All right. Um, let's make this a clipping mask. Hey, let's make this a clipping mask, eh? Clipping mash. And Holy macro! I'm gonna get. I'm gonna grab a cool color. Let's grab a cool color. No, let's grab a warm color. Let's grab a warm color, Shane. We're gonna put it right here. There we go. And let's knock this back. Take that off. Which? Where do we want the light coming from? Uh, let's see here. Let's make it come from the left side. Shall we? Whoops. Set that to multiply. Oh, so we made a interesting point. The, the, uh, the wheel, uh, base, like what's, uh, that's holding all of the uh, the wheel wells together. Mm -hmm. um, they're asking you to try changing that to the same color as the face, like that uh, more bluish uh, gray. Or is oh, that's an interesting idea. Well, let me let me get the lighting in first. I say. Okay. Michelangelo question. Mix both versions of Michelangelo. <laughs> I 
I have some experience in 3D animation and a master's degree in Fine Art Academy. All my life I draw. Uh, do you think it is necessary to have also a 2D animation experience to become a better animator? Now I work in movie industry. Uh, I am a 2D compositor and make uh, and I make visual effects, but maybe in the future want to be a 3D animator as well. Uh, I don't think you need to know. I think you need to know animation principles, which apply to both 2D and 3D. You know, you know all the things that like appeal and stretch and squash and all of those types of things that follow through overlap. I think those are necessary. Uh, but I don't think you necessarily need to know 2D to be a 3D animator, no. Oh, I gotta uh, combine these. C -c -c Combo. Come on, take this one and this one. All right, I think I have to take this off of. Oops. Release clipping work. mask. Huh? There we go. And now I can go to this and this. I can merge those layers and now turn that back into a clipping mask. Whoops, not that one, this one. Has your work ever appeared yeah. on anything else like a CD cover or something, or has anyone ever approached you about doing that sort of commission work? Yes, but I've never done it. I've turned it down. Never, not once? Never, not once. Never have you ever? Never have I ever. Never have I ever. I think my realtor's calling me. But I'm going to wait. I'm all like uh, questions. I need more. It's like if Michael Bay directed Wally. <laughs> computer. Robot. <laughs> uh, let's save that to desktop. Desktop. Save. Okay. I'll put it in the, uh, the live stream folder later, Nick. Nick. There we go. That's kind of cool. Let's get some shadows up in here. Just drawing, like, just drawing. Do you like Spider-Man? Yes. On first of this month, it was Spider-Man Day. Oh, I didn't know that. 
didn't know that either. Spider Man. Spider Man. What do you think this uh the name of this robot will be? Steve. Steve? Yeah, we're gonna name him Steve. 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 To be a concept artist at Disney, would you say you need to be more a designer or an artist? They're both. They're, they go hand in hand. You can't be a designer without being an artist. And you can't be an artist without being a designer. So they go hand in hand. When you're an artist, let's say you're painting, you're designing composition. Everything you do is design. And when you're a designer, everything you do is art. So you can't be one without the other. How's the new Mac Pro working for you? Awesome. Absolutely awesome. I love it. I'm loving my new laptop too. Oh yeah, you got to your new laptop too. Yeah. Do you think working for Disney as even an animation uh, cleanup artist pays well? Um, I think it, yeah. I I think relative to other jobs, it pays well. Yeah. Sure. All right, let's put a uh, let's do another clipping mask, and let's put this as an overlay, and let's make this nice and bright. Uh, why did you say no to whoever asked uh, to commission you to draw something? You don't want your work appearing in those uh, other formats, or are you didn't want to draw what they asked you to draw no I just I didn't I didn't want to I had other work <laughs> I didn't have time to do it don't want to get too overwhelmed with with work yeah you need to you've got to work you better work have you ever experimented with digital matte painting uh, not really, no. At what age did you start drawing, sir? Uh, about two years old. Two years old? Yeah. You know what I might do? I might... I might darken the white just a little bit so I can get more sheen on it. I'm not getting the the sheen that I want. You know, sheen. Sheen. You know, Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen. This is kind of fun, huh? I like doing this kind of thing. Yeah. It's rather entertaining. Aaron, how does it feel to be the digital Bob Ross? <laughs> I think that's funny. The digital Bob Ross. I like it. You know what I might do? Let me do this. What I'm gonna, I'm gonna, might you I'm going to turn these off. I'm going to grab. Uh, I'm going to select. Uh, I'm going to select the color range. I'm going to grab this color. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to image. I can't image. I can't adjust it. 
Well, that's weird. What I can do is I wonder if I can make it a little bit more blue. So we got orange and blue working together, you know? Mm -hmm. And I wonder if I go in and hit full opacity, take that up there, grab Put a layer on top. Actually, do this. Put this layer here. Let me just see what this is going to look like. Because I want to be able to get more sheen in it. light. What if I leave the wheels white? No, I think I'll make them blue as well. What do you think of that? Ooh. Image, because now we've got uh, opposing colors. Image. Deselect. Flashing colors? Yeah, what do you think of that? I kind of like yeah. that. Makes the orange pop a lot more. Pop a lot more? Pop a lot more. Pop a lot more. Makes it pop more. You know what I need to do is I need to turn off... Let me do this again. Uh, select, deselect. i got to turn off the... Uh, select, deselect. Turn off the drawing layer. Now, if I go select, oops, select, <laughs> select, 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 color select. range. It's not talking very well. Hit OK. Now, if I go back to that blue, Now let's turn on the drawing layer. Now that, that sits better. I can go deselect. And then I can turn on the shadows. We've got something a little different now. Except I'm going to take this one out. Let me take that out of there. Image. Horizontal. I like that. I like that better, don't you? That, uh, I like that. I like the blue and the orange yeah. working together like that. I just don't like the uh, the color of the uh, adjustments hue of the wheels. No, the color of the shadow. I want to make uh, it a little shadow. cooler. It's cooler. Cool, cooler. I mean, You're not putting me into the cooler. <laughs> yeah, so if I take this off of multiply and go, oh, sorry. Yeah, that one. If I put, take it off of multiply and put it normal, it's more of a uh, kind of violet color, I guess. Violet and gray. So that, that back to multiply. There. Oh. Now let's go back in and go to this. Oh, yeah, I want to uh, combine those. Oh, I got to turn this off. I got to go control. Control here. Release clipping mask. Release it. Release oh. it. No, I don't want to do that. Shouldn't his arms cast a shadow on the wheelbase? Shouldn't his arms what? 
cast a shadow on the wheelbase. Oh, actually they would. Yeah, good call. Yep, they would. Good call. Good call. Let me do this. Control, release, clipping mask. If I do that, no. Nope. Can't do that. Oh well, I'm going to have to keep them together. How do you accomplish that sort of shiny metallic feel? Well, that's what I'm going to uh, attempt to do next. But I'm trying to get these to... I did that as a clipping mask. Oh, I know what I can do. Okay. Uh, i got to do release, clipping mask. That's going to release both. Here I can layer, merge the layers, and then go back to here, create clipping mask, and now we're back. Okay, now we're good. So now I'm going to create another clipping mask, and I'm going to go really light with it. We're going to create a little sheen, a little Martin sheen. A little Martin sheen. extra light in there. I'm going to go back and, and uh, cast that shadow on the uh, treads. That was a good call, whoever, whoever said that. Oh, I don't want to put it on the orange. No, don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Just a little bit more zing. All right, so now let's jump back here. Go back to our kind of purpley gray. And let's cast that shadow, shall we? softer shadow because it's not right up against it. Good enough. You're gonna hurry this up. You're gonna run this up ASAP. Yeah, let's do a little ref secondary light on top. Shall we? Let's do it like a little green light. Well, actually, let's do this. to uh, add a little bit of background to them. Yeah, let's do that. I want to get that color in there. This is like a little design concept piece. Oh, 
I'll put a little bit of little color back there behind him. I want him to pop a little bit, so I'm going a little darker. Making robots, man. Making robots. I freaking love robots. I freaking love Duncan. <laughs> Kidding me? Let's grab some color right here. Now we're going to use my soft edge tool. Actually, let's grab this one. I made this brush the other day. I really like it. This is going to be our rim light brush. And we're going to go 100% right here. What would this droid be built for? Bringing, bringing beers, repairing ships or cars, <laughs> or just generally a source of entertainment? Generally a source of entertainment. I haven't really thought about. I, I, I kind of pictured him as an explorer with the little treads and everything. Yeah. This is a good spot for vacation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dustin, have you got another photo pack coming soon? Unfortunately, no, not quite yet. Haven't really been able. I haven't really gotten out much. I'm glad um, you changed that from haven't been able to just yeah. haven't gotten out. I you've just been able. I'm able, but I just don't want to because last time I tried going out in this kind of heat I near I almost passed out <laughs> so I my I'm not quite fit for this for this kind for this kind of heat so I'm just gonna lay low for for a little bit uh, I might try to get out there a little more the uh, some point in the future but let's see what happens yeah I like adding these little extra bits of light uh, uh, would you add some emotions or expressions to the robot or uh, leave it like this? I'm going to leave it like this for now. Just having it catch a little light along its edge of its track here. Kind of fun, huh?
slowly getting there. You know, I'm just adding like little details just to give it some interest. I want to give it a little more sheen. Sheen. How do you decide which of these images uh, to make available as prints or t-shirts? What's that? How do you decide which of these images uh, to make available as prints or t-shirts? Oh, they're just ones that we connect with. Twitch comment. Dustin, I thought you wanted to go to Africa. You should use the heat to train for that. <laughs> In the future. And plus, I think Africa's heat is very different from, from Florida heat, right? It is, yeah. Isn't it, like, much drier uh -huh. in Africa? Yeah, it is. Did any of you animators had to fill in for a voice actor for a bit because the uh, uh, the main voice actor was late or sick? Uh, not because the main uh, was late or sick, but we did cover it when before we choose chose an actor. That's called scratch voice. Scratch voice, yeah. You even did that, Dustin. Yes, I did. I did uh, some smaller, uh, like basically extra characters in uh, Timbo. Yep. Now some of them, they couldn't even, they could never find an actor as good as the scratch voice that they had from the animator. So some of them they kept. You know the character Rhino? Yeah. From, uh, from Bolt? I'll go get yeah. my ball. Yeah, he was, uh, he's one of the story artists. They just couldn't find anybody better than him. Going, eh? Random question. Okay. What does your handwriting look like? Um, it's not terrible. Here. And Dustin, have you seen Hasbin Hotel's Addict uh, music video? I have. And, uh, Definitely a good music video. Here's my handwriting. Just one I'm not used to. What does your handwriting look like? Nice. <laughs> mine was mine looks sloppy like a five year old's. <laughs> <laughs> Can you recommend some books? Yes. Um Lord of the Flies. <laughs> a 
Lord of the Flies, eh? Almost there, almost done for this little concept piece, which is a lot of fun. Just doing a little refining of our character. Sheen in here, little Martin Sheen. Light within the shadows. Now I'm going to put another layer on top. We're going to set that to whoa, whoa. We're going to set that to multiply. And we're going to get some deeper darks. Twitch. Oh, what is your favorite area, animation or painting? Uh, that's a tough one. I like them both. I love them. Obviously. Of course. The fellows who have been here. Always. I love them both. That's going to be my answer. I can't... Because when I get bored with one, then I just go over and do the other one. <laughs> it's one of the things I love about being an artist. You get sick of one thing, you can go over and do another. Sounds like I'm getting emails. Forgot to turn off my notifications. You got mail. Let's get a Hi, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? What brush do you use to paint? Oh, I use a lot of different brushes to paint. I'll make brushes and all kinds of stuff. There. It's a fun little robot. Let me get rid of my writing example. So now I'm going to grab our reflected light here and go a little hotter with it and brighter. I'm going to pick little areas to get really hot with it. Actually even brighter than that, almost white. Right on the edge. spots in here that will get a little sheen. And then we're going to burn in those eyes. I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed this very much. I feel like a little kid again making robots. Right? <laughs> yeah. I used to draw these when I was a kid. I remember oh. there's one robot that you drawing that you gave me. I, oh yeah, that hammerhead looking one. It was a very tall. Yeah. Very very tall robot. I did it when I was in high school. Yeah. I can't remember what happened to it though. Yeah, I'm glad you took care of it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's only a drawing that I've had for 35 years, but that's okay. <laughs> She'd make me feel even worse. <laughs> it 
Is the uh, Animator Survival Kit a good book? Yes. Highly recommend it. By Richard Williams. An amazing, amazing animator. Who just recently passed away last year. Amazing animator. One of the best in the world. Ever. So let's go in. I'm going to uh, uh, create... Make a folder. Oh, okay, that's what that is. I'm going to double that up. I'm going to turn that off. And we're going to go merge group. So now we've just got that. And I want to go in here with a very, very hot color. And I think I want to copy that just in case. And I'm going to go in with my, uh, we're going to knock this down to about 16%. And I'm going to turn this to color dodge. We're going to make this really hot. Well, this is guy's primary function. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Um, I don't know. To understand the five D's of dodgeball. <laughs> Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. dodge. <laughs> dodge a hammer, you can dodge a wrench. Or dodge, you can you dodge can a dodge ball, a ball. <laughs> you can dodge a ball. I just said if you can dodge a hammer, you can dodge a wrench. <laughs> If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. And we've named this robot Steve. <laughs> Steve. Do you like H.R. Geiger's work? Yes. This one has the, um, that created the, the aesthetic design for aliens, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. There's our robot. Put another couple of little lights in here. there. How about a blue light? There we go. Give them a little bit of markings there. What do you think? Yeah. You like? Me like. There's our robot. Our little robot. 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 Robot rock. Oh, can you hear Achilles out there dreaming? Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah, he's dreaming. He's dreaming of little... Chasing little bunny rabbits. Are we close to the one more thing? I think so. I think we we're doing it. Might be there. Huh? Are you currently doing it? <laughs> you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's barking. He's barking at little bunny rabbits. <laughs> he just goes... <laughs> <laughs> so it's super cute he does that. We're currently on the, uh, the one more thing? Yeah. Just doing one more thing. So there's... Oh, I got it. One more thing. Uh -huh. We got to do uh, a shadow. A shadow. I show. A shadow. You forgot the shadow. There we 
There we go. So there's our robot. I'll pin and scan. Right there on. it is. That was fun. Thanks for that challenge. I thoroughly enjoyed that. One more thing. Challenge complete. <laughs> That was a lot of fun. Are you going to do a podcast one day? No. <laughs> How about no? Are the fingers done? Uh, I've done enough. Done enough? Yeah, actually you're right. I should probably get a little of, a little bit of uh, uh, and a little one bit of One uh. more thing. <laughs> Close enough. Let's, that's just close enough. So there's our robot. And uh, that was fun to design. So thanks for that challenge. Remember, you can... Uh, um, a couple of different things. So our how to draw wolves, coyotes, and foxes is still $1. You can get it uh, uh, today. Uh, after today, it's going up to its normal price. So get on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and pick that up for $1. It's 18 plus hours. It's over 18 hours worth of content teaching me blabbing on about wolves and all that great stuff and foxes and coyotes and and, and all uh that jazz and all that jazz yes and so see i'm doing one more thing as we speak uh-huh <laughs> so i wanted to give that little panel a little a little uh dimension uh dimension. and then also uh um well, not, uh, oh, oh, the scholarship. Uh, I want yeah. you to, um, if you are interested in getting a scholarship from us, if you are on your way to college, on your way to art school, uh, or doing some online training and it costs you money and you need some help financially, then we might be able to help you. Put together your portfolio and uh, fill out our questionnaire and you might be eligible for a $5,000 scholarship. So just go to creatureartteacher.com slash scholarship and you can get all the information there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a blast. Dustin, did you have fun? Oh, wait a minute. One more thing. <laughs> Another one more thing? <laughs> yeah, Nick's going to go, come on, man. Come on. I well, what about the, the uh, Wacom newsletter? About the. Uh, oh, that's right. I, that's what I was forgetting. I knew I was forgetting something. So um, y we are giving away one more Wacom 1. One more Wacom 1. Uno mas. Yeah, one more. So if you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com and sign up for our newsletter... Um, you will be eligible to win a Wacom One pen display from Wacom. I've got one and I love it. And uh, I highly recommend it if you uh, are looking to get a pen display for a, an affordable price. This is this is it. And um, uh, but we're going to give one away, one more. This is going to be this will be our fifth one that we've given away, and we won't be doing any more after that. So one more, one more. So go to CreatureArtTeacher.com and sign up for our newsletter, and you just might win a Wacom One. Okay? And also while you're over there, you can check out Tim Hodge's uh, new course as well. That's right. Tim Hodge has a brand new course out called on drawing ima imaginary creatures, uh, or mythical creatures, and it's awesome. It's been very popular. People are loving it. Like I said, and I said it before, it's really good for a younger audience. And uh, those are just learning how to do characters and things like that. So it's a lot of fun as far as that goes. So go check that out. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a great week. We're going to see you again on Friday uh, back here at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. So until then, go out there, put some beauty back into the world, be nice to somebody, put your shopping cart away, and I'll talk to you on Friday. Thanks. Hey, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And if any of you newcomers are interested in any wildlife photography you can check out my instagram at dustin underscore blaze and uh, i post a lot of wildlife over there and uh and i do plan on getting back on the ropes on there pretty soon and you can also check out my current uh photo reference bundles which are available at creatureartteacher.com so you can go over there and check those out and once again thank you guys so much for watching be safe out there see you guys friday and until then cowboy bebop see ya